guys, welcome back to another video. Today, this is going to be my review for the Amazing Race Canada Season 8. And overall, I'm, I come off pretty mixed with this season. Um, obviously, I love Amazing Race. He's, however, this kind of, this season's kind of weird because there was a whole bunch of problems with COVID-19, uh, which we'll get to that in a few minutes here. There, <coughs> some teams had to drop out. And some team temporarily, and some teams came back. Uh, so, at one point, we literally had from literally nine teams get back. It like leg six. There were nine teams at one point. So it was it's kind of ridiculous uh, how this season went. Obviously, they kind of had to, production. Obviously, had to think of it on the run here. Uh, so let's start off with the premiere where they start off where they are starting off in Quebec uh, near Tremblon, and then they go to uh, Montreal where they they're they're essentially riding on this massive Ferris wheel here, which I'm which it seems like the type of thrilling challenge you would see on an Amazing Race East Canada uh, or what? And overall, the premiere was fine and. <laughs> Obviously, uh, uh, this, uh, there are also some pretty interesting characters on this season, like Julie Black, who's a really good, who, who I believe she won a Juno Award. She's a queen of R&B in Canada. Um, if you don't know, I'm Canadian too. We also have Tyshawn, or Tyshawn, from Big Brother Canada 9. I did cover that season of Big Brother Canada. Um, one of the only few Big Brother seasons I've covered. And, but, like, this leg is different because there, uh, after each challenge you you completed, you would get a puzzle piece. And then at the fight, then you would have to put those puzzle pieces together to make the Thor Love and Thunder Hammer thing. And then, and then bring it to, I believe, bring it to the pit. You might not, I don't think they actually had to bring it to the pit stop, but, like, you had to complete it right before the pit stop. Um, overall... Well, like the f the first two challenges were like jazz and the wit, the jazz, and obviously the, the like there's basically a dancing challenge and a jazz. I I I can't. Or oh yeah, jazz and pizzazz. Yeah, and overall, I I we saw more of the like the the dancing challenge. I believe. <coughs> <coughs> Should mention I'm sick <clears throat> while recording this video, so you're gonna hear me coughing. Uh, yeah, so forgot, kind of forgot to mention that, but yeah. Um, overall, we did see. Yeah, I believe Brendan and Connor got first in this leg here, and which actually, I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna show you this thing here. I kind of don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, so we did, we saw, uh, Brendan and Connor got first in this leg, and then, and Julie and Kathy did end up coming in last year, uh, and they were eliminated. It was kind of weird how they got, literally got so lost, they got escorted by police. So, it, it was pretty obvious for me that they were going to go home, or it was, it was either them or Deshaun, Cedric and Deshaun, who who literally walked by the guy with the billboard. Like, how do you do that? Like, wearing the billboard. Like, uh, like, who is one of the guys you need to find for a coup. And they literally walked right by him. Kind of insane. And let's talk about Julie and Kathy. They are good characters over this first episode. Obviously, we're going to talk about them a little bit later on. So they do end up coming back. But for now, they were good. Next up, we have a leg two where they're going to Lethbridge, Alberta, which uh kind of closer to home, I guess. I guess the closest leg to my to me, uh, but <laughs> not really. It's over like twelve hours or eight, but what uh, or eight hours or something? I don't know. But yeah, um, the, oh, uh, uh, overall, I'm not really going to talk about that many of the tasks, but like. I'm just going to give you my general opinions here. We do have the hoot or herd task. I definitely would have done the... I think I would have done the hoot one. The one with the 
owls. <coughs> the animal. <coughs> the math and herd part of the challenge there. Definitely not. I definitely not would have done that. The VR challenge, I feel like that would have made me sick. <laughs> and there was also that subway challenge they did in the, here as well. Um. Which I had to, it was, it was, the challenge was fine, honestly. <laughs> and then, but we did get to the pit stop where Fresnel actually won at, they, they won the leg, or Frank and Fresnel, they won the leg, and they actually, and it turned out to be an all elimination leg, or keep on racing leg, and according to Allie, I believe, came in last here. And, <coughs> and then we get to leg three. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry, I literally can't stop coughing. Like, it is the worst. I just need to pull through this video. <laughs> the racing team for NBC in this episode, which I, I really like the dancing challenge. It's kind of funny. Like, the let's get physical challenge. That's all I could think of <laughs> for the next couple days. Um, yeah, overall, I was quite fine with this. This challenge, and I was fine with that, with how it turned out here. Here, like the challenges weren't actually that spread apart, or uh, as much. And then I can't really remember who won this. Like, <laughs> let me go see. Oh, oh, Catherine. Yeah, Catherine and Craig won this. Like, yeah, I, why didn't? Yeah, Catherine and Craig did win this leg. We're gonna talk about them in a moment. But yeah. Yeah, they did end up uh, winning this leg here. We're going to go through these next few legs quickly here. Kathy Jibik did get eliminated here, but we're going to talk about them anyways. Uh, leg four, we got, yep, there's COVID problems, so Julian, Kathy, and Kathy and Jibik came back, and they had to complete a speed bump. Um, overall, these challenges in this leg were quite fun. And so I, I was happy with how it turned out here. It turned out it, it was a non elimination like though, so it doesn't really matter. Next up, we uh, well they did race to Camor, so yeah. Uh, leg five, they back to BC, <laughs> going to Vernon, and we do end up. This is possibly one of the most interesting legs. We're in kind of more controversial, especially with the last challenge here, where Cedric and Deshaun actually cheat, and. And Julie and Kathy, they, she accidentally picked up the board. Well, didn't even look at it. Well, Cedric and Deshaun actually picked up the board and deliberately looked at it. I can't remember who won this thing. I don't, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, overall, uh, Cedric and... Uh, but, uh, Kathy and... Je uh, uh, Julie and Kathy did end up going home again here. And overall... Uh, I was on their side. I did. I didn't want. I don't think. Uh, if I was going to be honest, I think Cedric and Sean should have been thrown out here. Or they did. They did break the rules. Rules here, and and I think they definitely deserve or, or to go out here. All right, leg six. We are going to London, Ontario, where we got the on ramp. Where we got the teams that came, we got three teams come back, Catherine and Craig, who won like three, with Corden Alley and Dennis and Durrell. And then the on-ramp challenge, only two teams got to come back, Dennis and Durrell did, get an, uh, did end up getting eliminated here, because they didn't find the on-ramp pass, and, and overall, they were fine, mm -hmm. and didn't really bring too much to the show. Ooh, let's move on. It was a non-elimination leg throughout the rest of the leg, though, so nothing too much to say there. And and then we get to leg seven, which was really interesting. <coughs> <coughs> My God, I'm sorry. It's a seven. It is because it is a double elimination leg, and we get the introduction of the of the pass, the double pass, which. I really like this. T I I think it's better than the one way, definitely. Um, overall, I, I, and this is probably the best episode of the entire season, if I'm going to be honest here. Uh, we do end up seeing. I think it was Jesse and Jimmy who won the season, won this episode here, or and then we get to. Fernella did one 
did, for now and their little bit of an alliance did end up one way did end up one wing Beverly and Veronica and and, and didn't there was a t unfortunately Beverly and Veronica were the only ones who get one way as one team uh, one way for Della or whoever one way Beverly and Veronica <laughs> Yeah, uh, but they didn't get eliminated here. Uh, it was uh, Cedric and Deshaun who got eliminated, and Cassie and Jimmy. Let's talk about Cassie and Jimmy first. They were fine. I really, uh, I, I, I honestly, I was hoping they'd get eliminated again after they came back here. So I was quite okay with them going. They brought nothing to the show for me. They were really boring. And Cedric and Deshaun, I was kind of cheering for them because obviously he was came from Big, he was the winner of Big Brother Canada Nine. But they didn't really, really didn't mention it at all. They mentioned it once, never mentioned it again. So I was kind of hoping that I would see more of more of them, but it didn't listen to be. Next up, they they go to Ottawa. Got no, we get the return of the face off. So it was just co croquet. But really, this like doesn't matter because it was a down elimination like like what are we doing? And it's in like I really don't get what they were doing here. So next up, <laughs> so we're just gonna skip that like here where we go. Next up, we go to leg nine <coughs> or the <Inzera. coughs> to New Brunswick, <coughs> which. Uh, this leg was okay. I really, I, oh, I'm fine with this leg. It was mainly, it was a race between Cord and Alley and Brandon and Connor. That was the mainly the main big point of this episode here. At Brandon and Connor did up, end up pulling off here. I really like this episode. And uh, Cord and Alley once again, they, they, I didn't really want them to win because they are, they came in last to like, and I, I don't like. Pe if you don't know, I don't like team. If I, I don't want if a team got last in an elimination leg, or got DQ'd for something, and, and then I'm coming back. Uh, I don't really look. I don't really feel okay. I'm not okay with them winning here, but Cordonali, I was fine with them going out here. So. Because uh, I think Brendan Connor obviously brought more to show, in my opinion. Next up, leg tens, penultimate leg. They were racing to Ontario, back through Ontario, and they were racing through Tobermory. And there was only, there were five teams after this siege in the race, and we get the return of the things up again. <coughs> they have to play some pool game. Yep. And uh, we do. It was not. It, we did. Did see that four teams were going to be allowed into the finale here. We did find that out, and unfortunately, we do get the exit of um Beverly and Veronica. Oh, I was hoping they'd go. Uh, well, uh, they literally had a they had a very disastrous leg in leg four, and that really set me off with them. I really did not want them to win, and, and I think. I, I really thought their winning chances just went down the hole for that. Uh, they uh, going into the season, they were really high in my winner contention, as they remind me of Steph and Kristen. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. And next up, we have the finale. We're back going back to this, going back to BC, and unfortunately, <laughs> they can't have Catherine and Craig win. Why? So yeah, um. Yeah, this ride was interesting. Uh, like, every team at one point was in the lead. Except maybe Jesse and Jamique. Uh, or Jesse and Marika. But, <coughs> it was kind of, and I really liked this finale. It was quite fine, honestly. Uh, better than the previous finale. Some of the previous finales in Amazing Race history. Overall, it was quite fine, though. Oh, and let's talk about these final few teams here. Starting off with Brendan and Connor, who were f fine. The, uh, I, I, I thought they reminded me of Sam and Paul and a bit of Kenneth and Ryan from season 5 and I think obviously they're quite worse <laughs> worse than those two teams uh, and after they came in last in an all elimination like egg, I don't I didn't really want them to win here I kind of wanted them to make the top 3 though as I didn't really want Carlton and Craig to get to the final uh, whatever 
for uh, yeah, next up, Fernella. I thought Fernella was actually going to win the season. They were my winner picks for the for the season. They had after episode one. Uh, they had they had a, what I thought was a winner quote in saying the two previous teams were from uh, Alberta. Two previous winning teams, so obviously Court, Courtney and Adam, and uh, Anthony and James. They ended up winning, and, and they won. Continue. I thought it was going to happen, but it didn't. And next up, we have we have uh, Jesse and Marika, who really, really, they were on and off. They did end up winning like three legs, so that's interesting. Uh, I found them kind of boring, but I was going to be fine with, I was fine if they won, and I was kind of hoping they would do well here. It was, so, but I was fine with them. And then last up, we have Catherine and Craig. I did not want them to win. Even though there's, obviously, I kind of felt like they were going to win because of uh, Catherine's story with having cancer, or and, and having, like, the brain tumor and stuff. Uh, and, and I kind of saw them winning kind of from the beginning of the episode, which I was kind of sad about. Well, because they, if you don't know, they did get, end up, they were one of the teams who got COVID. So, I was quite fine. But honestly, I was. I'm bet. I'm kind of. I realize they're better winners than I. They're better winners than previous teams. They're Brent, Brent and Josh did terrible in twenty one. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. That is the review for the Amazing Race Canada season eight. Eight. Uh, stick around for Amazing Race Australia review because that's ending quite soon. I guess as of recording this video. And so that will come out in November. But that is the video. Thank you for watching.